what kind of opposition did you encounter in the Department of Interior in carrying out New Deal programs? Was there much opposition? There, there was opposition in the changes, particularly in the older bureaucracy. You know, the, every bureaucracy, whether it's governmental or industrial or educational, builds up a series of principles. And anything that goes against those principles, they resist. They resist at first because it suggests that maybe they've been wrong. And they are against it, uh, secondly, because it is contrary to what they call uh, conventional wisdom. Okay. Did this resistance come from any particular camp or any particular... I mean, was, this, was there conservative resistance, I guess? Is well, it, it, it varied from, uh, er, from branch to branch in the department. Some of the older departments and some of the older employees, and I'm big old in the sense of tenure, not in the sense of uh, how old they were by years, uh, were very, very protective of doing things the way they had been done. All of them were defensive when they were told that they had to change something, because as I said before, this implied that they'd been wrong before. Now, um, FDR, and Stephen asked this question earlier, something similar. FDR needed the political support of Southern Democrats. Now, what constraints did this place on New Deal programs in terms of how far he was willing to push them, how liberal they could be, how progressive they could be? Well, of course, it's obvious that uh, FDR required the support from the Congress in order to get his legislation through. And uh, it's obvious also that the Congress was largely influenced by the Southern contingents. And that there was a realization on his part and on the part of his staff that you could only go so far uh, and maintain the support in general from uh, the group that had the greatest influence. So that the Southern influence in the Congress certainly limited FDR as to how far he could go. Now, that doesn't mean that that was the only limitation to it. it there was the fact that he was not a champion of civil rights and that uh, he did not have this high on his priority, nor did it seem to him that it was consistent with the other things that he wanted to do. In other words, if he could have done it without losing other things, he might have done it. But if it's meant losing something that he held up as a great importance, he would hesitate to do it. Now, if you were um, explaining to a young person what it meant for you to, to be a, uh, a part of the New Deal, what would you want them to understand? Well, I would uh, think that, uh, that I would, would want them to understand that the New Deal represented a new situation vis-a-vis -vis the importance of government in the lives of average citizens in this country. That the type of laissez-faire which had gone on after the, the Civil War with the great growth of American industry and whatnot, was being clipped somewhat. And in that clipping, there were the seeds of getting new developments, new approaches, and new uh, regulations, which would assist and help the people who were in need. And that included, of course, black Americans. Did you feel that you were part of a movement to make government more responsive? Yes, but I didn't think that I was a major part of it. I thought that I was among those who were participating in that activity. But I didn't uh, think I was the captain of the, tri of the troops going over the hill. Let's stop for a minute. Okay, we're about to roll out here.